Good morning. Today is Wednesday, the 9th of June. It is about 8 o'clock in the morning, and um, I just finished reading another chapter of this book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. And this chapter was all about boundaries. And I have to tell you, once again, this was great. Um, I keep saying that this book, everybody should read it. It's thought provoking. It's got good stuff in there. Um, but it was talking about control and um, being healthy and having a healthy mindset and being at peace and having contentment and things like that and dealing with other people and um, kind of the strategies that you have to apply in your relationships so that you can have compassion for other people and that you don't get so worked up and frustrated with people um, so that you want to be vengeful <laughs> towards them. Um, it talked about, you know, when we love people, we have a desire to care so much and to want the best for them. And when they're making decisions that may negatively impact them, that you want to help them make better decisions. Um, or, you know, if they're living a certain lifestyle that is, um, you know, continually putting them in a position to, you know, to, to spiral down with negativity and have all kind of bad things happen to them. Your love for them wants, you know, compels you to want to do things for them, to help them change. And this is just talking about you cannot want change for a person and put more work into changing another person and, and take ownership of controlling a situation that is not yours to control. You can't want that more than the other person. You can't put more work into changing somebody else's circumstance than that person is willing to put into changing their circumstance. Because what will end up happening is, you know, you put all this energy into making life better for this person and you will have sacrificed so much only for them you know, to end up in, the, in, in a bigger hole than they were in, in than the last one that you, you pulled them out of. So you need to um, set boundaries for yourself so that you don't have to be disappointed and, you know, and all of those things. You don't have to get frustrated. And if you realize that, hey, um, or I guess for me, I thought about that and I thought about all the relationships that I have, you know, relationships with my parents, relationships with brothers and sisters, relationships with, you know, um, my children. Uh, I'm not married now. I'm just like, but in past relationships, my relationships with, you know, with um, significant others and, and things like that. And I had always wanted to be this pleaser. And a lot of times, you know, I wouldn't necessarily do things to get something out of it. But, you know, I know that I've had relationships where I gave and I gave and I gave and I gave, um, and I didn't have the same type of expectations um, in return. And so the relationship was, um, it wasn't balanced. And, you know, I couldn't expect the same type of things from, from, from the other people in those relationships as they could expect from me. And I mean, this kind of goes for everybody. Like I said, anybody in my life that I love and I was close to, um, I just kind of loved and gave and helped um, and just availed myself uh, unselfishly, right? And, you know, and not to say that nobody did anything for me, but um, I think people just took for granted, like, oh, I, she can do this, I can ask her, and I don't have to do the same type of things in return. 
or I can ask her to rescue me out of this hole and um, I can go create another hole and I can go and ask her to help me again and I can create another hole and, you know, and when you think about it, and that's kind of like what this book is about, you know, talking about boundaries, you have to look at, okay, so are you going to get, am I going to get frustrated because this person keeps ending up in holes and I keep bailing them out and it ends up being a waste of my energy and whatever resources that I put into bailing them out of their hole? You know, am I the problem? Have I become an enabler? I believe so. Um, and so I need to stop being an enabler. I need to, to, when I'm helping people, making sure that I'm helping people that are willing to help themselves as well. Um, you know, I see myself, you know, doing this and I've gotten better about it. So that's probably why I was like hyped up about reading the book. Cause I'm just like, mm -hmm, learn that lesson, learn that the hard way, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I, I've got a relationship with, um, you know, I've got two kids and, you know, and they're, they're smart, right? They're grown, they're, they're adults. And they, I think that they, they've learned all the right things. And, you know, I've tried to give them some, um, insight and approaches and strategies to be able to manage their finances effectively um, to be able to have good credit, to be able to, you know, to, to be able to have, um, uh, I guess, uh, what's it called when you've got like a strong buying power and, you know, I've kind of educated them on, on lots of things. And, you know, I think they have both at one time or another ended up in the hole where they've completely, you know, messed up their finances and stuff like that. And, you know, and I've, I've helped them, you know, but now I'm at a point where, um, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing, you keep making dumb decisions and you can make whatever decisions you want, but I'm not going to bail you out. And, What's interesting is I sometimes will, you know, this is me as a mom, right? That you, you watch your babies <laughs> and you want the best for them and you help them when you see that they need help, even if they're not asking, right? And so um, I have a tendency to do some things behind the scenes, you know, like when I know certain things could be better, you know, I may say, oh, you know, let me just go and I don't want my kids to have a lot of debt, you know, like student loans and stuff like that. Let me just go pay stuff towards this because I can, you know, they're not asking me for it. I'm not telling them that that's what I'm doing, you know, but then I'll look, you know, because then I may do it because it's like, oh, I want you to have good credit and, you know, I just want to help you so that, you know, when you get ready to buy houses or, pro you know, whatever, you need to buy a car, you need to do whatever, you're in the best possible position to do it. Um, and so that whatever it is that you're trying to do is um, you're in a position to get the best deal possible. Because, you know, if you have bad credit, the cost of money is high. If you have excellent credit, the cost of money is low. So you want to have excellent credit so your cost of money can be low. Get more for your money. And so I'm just like, find myself, I was always doing these things. And then I just see them doing something dumb, you know, dumb here, dumb there, right? And it's like, okay, you know what? They're grown. I can't fix it. You know, I got good credit. My credit is like, you know, I don't think it's 850. I think 850 maybe is the highest. I don't think it's 850. But, you know, it's probably like 825, <laughs> 830, <laughs> something like that. Um, I don't keep debt. I, you know, I pay cash for stuff. If, you know, if I do have to, you know, take a loan for something like cars, I pay stuff off as quickly as I can. Mortgages, I overpay, you know, to get ahead on things. Um, you know, things that I have, like, you got to pay every month, like your utilities. So I pay that stuff like a year in advance. I, I don't, 
I, I just don't want to have money problems, you know. I want to be in a position where I can just put my money that I earn in the bank. And I got a lot of flexibility. And when stuff happens, you know, because there's always something that happens. There's always something that breaks. There's always something you got to fix. There's always some expense, you know, that comes out of the blue. You know, so I plan for Murphy's Law. You know, what will go wrong, what can go wrong, will go wrong, right? And so I don't want to be... I. I I, I I live for peace and contentment and I never want to be in a position where I'm kind of in a desperate position. And so everything I do in my life and every decision I made is to make sure that I'm at peace. I'm comfortable when something happens out of the blue. I'm not, I don't have to cry about it. I don't have to beg anybody. I don't have to freak out. I don't have to stress out nothing, you know, and this is, the same in, in the strategies that I take um, to apply to my life, for sure, from a financial perspective, I try to educate the people that are close to me that I love that these are simple things that you can do, right? And um, when I see them like, oh, you know, like in the whole pandemic, oh, you don't need to pay this, you know, we don't have to pay, we don't have to pay rent. We, we can get mortgage forgiveness. We can defer these things. I'm like, why would you defer just to defer? I'm like, nothing is free. Nothing is free. If you owe somebody some money and they tell you, you know, you don't have to pay me now. You can pay me later. It's going to cost you more later. So I'm like, don't get caught in that trap, you know, but there are people who just want life to be so easy. And it's like, oh, well, if I don't have to, I'm not going to, not thinking four steps ahead, you know, that this is really going to come back to bite me and what's going to happen when they say, oh, hey, deferment is over. You haven't paid us for the last 10 months. You know, you didn't pay month to month. Now we want you to pay us, you know, $8,000 now. And if you don't pay us $8,000 now, you know, then we're going to tack this on to your mortgage maybe on the tail end, but it's going to cost a lot more money. There's more interest charged. And either way, it's just a bad decision. Uh, same thing with student loans. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, student loans are deferred. I'm like, you're working, right? You're li These types of things are for people who have hardships. You don't have hardship. You got a job, your job didn't change. You know, your income level didn't go down as a result of the pandemic. And so your ability to pay your, but you should just pay your bills. I'm like, and if you're gonna take advantage of a deferment, you know, pay, you know, say you're gonna do it and then pay more towards stuff. Get yourself ahead, you know. Always do something to get yourself ahead. Don't do things to get yourself behind. But, so these are the lessons that I get, moral stories. But if you don't take my advice, I'm not going to stress out about it, you know, because I'm straight. I'm straight. And you don't live in my house and you're not affecting the stuff that's going on in my house, you know, with my things. And so if you want to create stress for yourself, I don't want that for you. But if that's what you insist upon for yourself, then I'm just going to accept it. You know, but I'm not going to rescue you from your bad decisions. You're going to have to figure it out because you got to learn some kind of way. So I, I'm, I'm so much better about setting boundaries. You know, I'm so much better now at looking at relationships. You know, like there was a piece of advice that a friend of mine gave me that says, hey, you know, and this was, she didn't come out and say boundaries, but she did, it, but it was all about boundaries because I, um, I remember getting mad at one of my friends and it had to do with money. And it was like, Hey, you know what? We're riding to work together all the time and, um, in my car and you never offer me money for gas. Right. And, you know, or, some, it just was weird. It's like anything that came up that was like a financial thing, it just always got weird and uncomfortable. And so my other friend, you know, I'd be frustrated and I'd be like, oh, I'm so mad. And she's like, you know, 
you have to meet people where they are. You need to understand, like look at that relationship and you know, maybe there's 10 aspects to your relationship. One aspect of your relationship is money. And if you know that you guys get keep getting jammed up about money, just don't allow money to be a part of your relationship. Don't loan money, don't borrow money, don't pay for stuff for somebody else, just exclude that from your relationship so you don't ever have to worry about it and you can just enjoy the rest of your relationship. So just make those assessments and create the boundary accordingly. Um, so that was really good advice then, um, which I took and which worked out very well. You know, for other folks, um, you know, um, it used to be where I had some very, um, well, I guess I'll just say, my family, it's a group of very opinionated people, you know, who have no problem saying what they think. And if they're aware of some choices that you are making and they want you to do something different, some of them will just stare you down or chase you down and just keep like, no, 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 you know, trying to control a situation. And so for me, I had to set boundaries there to be like, listen, nobody's paying my bills. Nobody's living my life. Nobody has to be impacted by my decisions. So for some people, I'm like, I'm going to keep you at arm's length because we're not going to have any of these conversations. And I'm not going to allow you in my circle to understand what's going on with me day to day because I don't need you disturbing my peace. Now, if I come to you and I ask you your opinion about something, then maybe I'm looking for another perspective that I can contemplate to see what I can glean from other people's situations who have maybe gone through something that I'm going through. But ultimately, it's my life and my choice. I'm living my life the way that I want to live it. I used to live life the way that other people wanted me to live it. And that was very uncomfortable and um, caused me to isolate myself, to distance myself, to resent certain people, um, or just to make decisions that weren't, weren't necessarily the best for me, didn't cause me to feel good for myself, you know, and, and at some point in time, I, I, I lost myself, you know, I didn't know, well, what do I want for myself? What is, what makes me happy? How do I have joy in my life? You know, I had to get to a point where I set boundaries just so that I could find myself and find my own, my own joy and my own contentment. And, you know, not being, you know, and, 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 and allowing myself to take control of my own life. Um, and so this, this book today, it was just, a, that chapter was just a reminder of a lot of, a lot of those lessons that I have learned. And so I tell you, it's, it's so nice when you take a class or something, you know, like you've been, you've been doing things, but you're not certified as something. And so when I go and I'll do like, a, um, like I know a lot, I know, I, I know, well, I know a whole lot about a whole lot of things, but I'm not one of those people that can really explain, you know, like somebody will say, well, what methodology do you utilize? I'm like, I'm not really a methodology person. I just understand how to get certain things done. I can, you know, I've been exposed to so much that I have a lot of wisdom, right, that I can apply based on lots of experiences to, that I can apply to situations to navigate through. And, um, and so it makes me very effective across a number of different areas. 
But, you know, if somebody said, well, you know, can you write a paper on this? No. I, you know, just because I know how to do something doesn't, know, doesn't mean that I actually know how to break it down step by step by step to teach somebody else. You can come and observe me. <laughs> you can ask me some questions, but I can't write the book on it. And so, um, but you know, I might go take a class or something. Like, so for example, um, I have my uh, PMP, which is a, um, is a certification for project management professional. And I took this like week long boot camp, and then you have to go take a class. I don't know. So, yeah, I took the class, which was a boot camp, and then you have to go take the certification exam. And you know, I'm in the class and I'm talking to the instructor and, you know, we're learning these things. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. And da, da, da. and I usually end up where, you know, in these, this professional education, I'm like always like the instructor's favorite person. <laughs> because I get so excited because I'm like, I know this, I know this, I know this. And, but I'm just excited about learning it. And then when I go take the test to get certified, I'm like top scores on that. And it's like, oh, wow. You know, it's so wonderful to have, have been doing work and practicing things. And, you know, when we think about something like a project manager, I can remember when I was like maybe 25 that um, I was working and um, I was I was a re recruiting manager and working for a consulting organization. And one of the folks um, that was a, a, a very seasoned consultant, he was just like, I think he told someone that I would make a great project manager, like I'm a natural project manager, but I didn't know anything about project management. And I didn't see myself as somebody that could go work, you know, directly for clients and lead projects and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, so in recent years, but I, but I, over the years, I've never had the title of project manager, but I've been managing stuff forever. <laughs> and I just didn't have that in my, in my job title or anything like that. And, you know, when you work as a consultant, a lot of times, you know, when you're being considered for positions, you know, companies want you to have certain certifications. So I'm like, okay, well, let me go get this certification. And then um, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I didn't know this little thing and this little thing here. I was like, but overall, I know so much. And it's so nice for when you feel like, okay, well, I don't, I don't really know. So I'm, I'm going to have to take a class. And you go take a class and you're like, wow, I know so much more. Than I, than I thought I knew that it's just, it's really, really rewarding. So when I was reading this today, I was like, I learned that, I learned that, I apply that, I do that, I've overcome that. And um, it just makes me happy. <laughs> Obviously, you can tell. Um, so yeah, so that's that boundaries today. Boundaries are real and boundaries are things that everyone should have and uh, Boundaries when applied, when established and applied consistently, and you stick to them, it's goodness for everyone. So, there's my share for today. On a MEPS check in, mentally, I'm clear, I'm good. Uh, emotionally, I'm happy. Uh, physically, I'm feeling fine. I did, uh, I did yoga. Today, I did like a 50-minute yoga practice, which was really good. It wasn't, um, there wasn't anything that I felt was terribly challenging about it, which is good, which means I'm, I'm progressing and my, my body is getting stronger. So I'm happy about that. Um, I also did this like three-minute plank challenge, um, and uh, while that was hard to do after a 50-minute yoga practice, I did it, and I feel good about that. And so, um, yeah, so my body is just good, um, physically very good. And uh, spiritually, spiritually, I feel wonderful. I, um, I, uh, I prayed a little today. 
Uh, actually, I was kind of praying throughout my whole yoga practice, too. And even talking to God as I read this book. Because there's stuff. It's like, oh, you don't want to do it. I'm like, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> Far from perfect. Um, but, yeah, I, I, feel, I feel blessed um, spiritually, for sure. So, today is a good day. And... Um, I, like I said, I've got some things out of my way. You know, my routine is I want to read. Um, I'm mean, going to want to pray. I want to read the Bible. And I did. I read some Bible verses today. And I'm reading. Um, I always read, you know, the verse of the day. And I read um, a chapter from whatever book of the Bible that I'm reading. And I'm now in Revelation. And Revelation is scary. <laughs> I feel like uh, Revelation is the Bible's version of scared straight. And, um, you know, it was talking about, um, well, there was a bunch, I, I forget what chapter it was that I was in, but, you know, it was basically talking about, uh, well, the verse of the day was talking about the, um, the basically the path the path to life and heaven right is narrow you know it's a narrow gate that you have to walk through but the path to um i don't know if it's the path to evil or the path to destruction the path to death is really wide it's broad it's a broad path to take you to death it's a narrow path to take you to life and then um, in reading Revelations, it was talking about um, if you follow, you know, if you live a life doing your best to live your life according to God's will, believing in Jesus Christ, um, and, you know, following the wisdom of the Lamb, that you will be rewarded right and that you will be given um a white robe right and you know you'll you'll wait for the rest of the people that are given the white robe and you know to be able to get your rewards in heaven basically um but for those that don't you know then you will be given wrath you know, you'll see the, you will experience the wrath of the lamb, you know, and it kind of talks about this destruction and the mountains will, uh, you know, the mountains will crumble and you will be one of those people that's like, you know, mountains fall on me and hide me from the wrath, you know, of the lamb. And so for me, I want to choose the narrow path go through the narrow gate and I want a white robe. I, I don't want, I don't want the wrath. So, um, I appreciate the reading. Um, I appreciate the reading of the Bible. I appreciate this book because it is, it is Bible based. Um, and so it gives advice and then it actually shares, you know, where in the Bible you can find this advice right um and so um yeah i really enjoy starting my day that way because it it makes me think about okay what did i do yesterday and how did i live and did i start off with good intentions and you know what did i do right and and where where did i stumble and um how can i start my day today and I'll ask God to forgive me for my stumbles and I will ask God to help me stay on the path and to, you know, fill me with the Holy Spirit so that that spirit can guide my path. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I enjoy my morning routines and, uh, it, it definitely helps me keep a smile on my face and to have peace and contentment. Um, I just, and, and, and to 
be reminded of how, how blessed I am. So that's my morning update. I have a little time, so I think I am going to go for a ride. Have a very blessed day.